Now to the Vegas's interface. We can see seven tabs, Explorer, Trimmer, Project Media, Media Manager, Transitions, Video FX, and Media Generators. Explorer works exactly like Windows Explorer, so you can explore the project folder and look for the files. In this video I've just browsed to a shared documents and picked up a still image called bluehills.jpg. Please note, always have your footage under the appropriate folder which we've created earlier, not what I've just done. Now you'll also notice the moment I select the image or any element at the bottom it will give you its attributes, resolution for example in this case 800 by 624 bit and JPEG compression. Simply drag and drop the image onto the area at the bottom. This is with the case of Pro and in Studio and Platinum they have the timeline at the top. And you'll notice the layer on the timeline or the track one populates showing thumbnail of the image. And you'll notice the layer on the timeline or track one populates showing a thumbnail of the image. And at the top right hand side you see the preview window. Please observe once you drop any media onto the timeline it becomes part of your project and sits in the project media for your convenience. Now in this case with this still image if I drag its end onto the timeline it appears I can stretch it further if I want it for a longer duration so it loops itself. I can stretch it as much as I want to. Now you'll also observe that the thumbnail has got two instances of the image. That's just for the preview. And if I drag the playhead on the timeline like so, you see there isn't two separate images, it's continuous. So we can loop music, text, videos and other elements the same way too. Now we click the media generator tab and select text on the left panel. And we get a different types of text samples with small preview as to what they are. For now we select default text with no background, other words transparent background and drag and drop into the timeline. So we see the pop-up window appears wherein we can customize the attributes for this particular text and what we are going to create. Type something in the edit table area. Mm, pal, phrase, all oh, it's name, line. Okay. Uh, change the font size to your liking. Um, um, for it should be fine. Hit enter. Now you see your created text. However, you're not able to see it in the preview window. Why? I'll get back to that. But before, we have to see something more important. Click the placement tab in the pop up window. Now, this red bounding box or the outline shows us the title safe area. So any text we create should not be placed outside this area as some tellies may chop this area. So it's good to play safe in this instance, but for creativity, never play safe. Explore. Okay. Um, also we can activate the title safe margins on the area in the preview window by clicking this squid icon here and selecting from the drop down select safe areas. Now we see two outlines, the inner one being absolute safe and the outer one just testing waters. Okay, now coming back to why we were not able to see a text in the preview window. So we select the track where the text is sitting, stretch it to the same length. You'll notice once you reach the same length as the photo, the cursor flashes gives us sky blue or a turquoise-ish highlight indicating that they both have snapped incorrectly. Now we select the text track layer and drag the text track for the image track as if we were keeping it on the top of the rack. Layers or tracks have the same Photoshop rule anything on top is visible first as we can see our text now. If we need to go back and make changes to this text's properties we click this icon at the end of the text on the timeline. This looks like a movie click called Generated Media. And we get the same pop up window wherein we had created the text at the first place. We can click different tabs and make some changes if we need. Like change the transparent background to opaque in black. But we don't want that for now. We want the blue hills and this to be visible.
click the project media tab and we see the text also has appeared in the project window now. Click file and hit save and save it under project media folder. Now that we have our basic clip ready, we can now render it as a video. So we are now ready to make a video out of it now. So we click file, render as, there are heaps of different option formats. Main concept MPEG-1 is VCD, but we will assume that we are going to create a DVD. So from the save as type, select main concept MPEG-2. This is if you want to make a DVD. We'll cover other formats in a separate video. Leave all of the settings as is, except for one. Make sure the render loop region option is unchecked or disabled, grayed out all the time. Save it under project folder with the relevant name. Once this file is rendered, it would be sitting in the project folder, but I'm going to cancel it this for now. Click file, save, and then exit. Thanks for watching.